and welcome to the Derby Creek Diaries. I'm Gail Thompson and I'm back in the saddle again. It had been quite a while since I got to the craft room and it's time to do that. I enjoyed my conventions but I've got to get back into the groove. I hope that you're feeling well and in a crafty mood. We're going to play with some bright and cheery colors of some new inks I got from Ink on 3 and the techniques that I saw at uh, the Simon Says Create, I'm going to try to recreate. Maybe successfully, maybe not. This first project, I only got to see, I didn't get to do. They took a the fade out ink and ran it uh, over a stencil and then stamped an image and then watercolored colored it with the Altair inks. And it makes a pattern underneath it that's just a darker version of that color. It doesn't work with other inks. Then the next project I did actually do the next day, and it was this hydrangea. And the thing about these inks is you can just put them on top of each other, and it doesn't make mud. Uh, you know, you don't have to dry in between. It's not really a dye ink. It's a fusion ink, so it's not really a pigment either. But let's play. I'm speeding this up so I don't bore you all to death. I am putting the fade out ink on three ink through a stencil. I don't have a stamp that has enough wide open space, so we're using that. And then I'm just going to watercolor over it. Gives you the same idea as that squirrel image. It's just I don't color that much, so I don't have a lot of stamps with open space. I'm just going to go ahead and put the color down. I'm just playing here. This isn't really going to make anything. I just wanted to show you how vibrant the colors are and how easily they blend and eventually I'm going to show you how wonderful they work on top of each other and there it's blending that blue into the purple that first color is pink now the red in this series is really really a dark pink um, it's beautiful um, I'm not sure I use it here I don't think I do but I'm just I'm just goofing around here. I'm not putting things, obviously, Roy G. Biv is happening that, well, it's kind of a backwards Roy G. Biv, I guess. But I just want you to see how cool these inks work. Um, and I, what else was I going to tell you about these? Um, I'm just using a regular watercolor brush. You don't have to heat set the uh, background. It's better kind of, I think, if the ink is fairly fresh, it absorbs the water, a little, the color a little better. Now we're making orange. I hope everyone is doing great. I really, really have so many projects to show you and so many techniques, and I just get overwhelmed, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, the distance between between my uh, videos, I have to do all the house chores and errands and everything as well. Now we are going to heat set this. The Obviously the squirrel, you just, all they did was uh, stamp over it and then color. But this gives you the same idea. Now I'm just going to show you, I'm playing. I am totally playing. There is no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just picking up color to see if what makes a mess and what doesn't. Because typically with dye inks, you put them down and you get too many colors and you just start to get mud. I'm not saying that you'll never get mud, but you really can do some oddball things. See that color is going right on top. It's not, you know, just blending in there, the green and the uh, pink there. I'm going to get up close and get you an idea there and then further along in my playing. I am still showing you. It's pretty amazing that these are actually dye inks. So let's move on. I'm just going to fade some stuff out and see how it looks. It does uh, fade out beautifully into several lighter shades. Now I'm trying this with the teal and you can get it to almost nothing. So I think that's pretty cool. So I start the grade experiment. <clears throat> I go ahead and I, instead of using a stencil, I just stamp this grid background 
on some watercolor paper, the Tim Holtz watercolor paper. And I do it on the smooth side. And it's, it takes a, my table has a little dip in the middle, so it takes a, a try or two. Plus, I've never used that stamp before. That's from whoa, Pink Fresh Studios. So I'm just going ahead and making sure I have a good image. And now I'm going to stamp Trinity Stamps, I uh, Wish You Were Here, set with the gnomes. This is my first gnome stamping on a card on a video. I think maybe even at all. So that's how far behind the times I am. I'm using Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink that you can you know, color after you heat set it, you can color uh, watercolor or use Copics. Uh, now I'm just going to take my little cubes and I'm going to use them as watercolors. I am going to spare you watching me watercolor because this isn't what this, this video is about. Uh, if it was, it would be a massive fail because I'm just not the best colorer and I could practice and do that, but it's on my to-do list for maybe when I retire. But I just, you know, I'm painting around my little seeds there and my little umbrella. And I'm just going to skip through quickly this coloring. But what I'm doing in between colors is I am stamping off onto a, uh, another piece of watercolor paper with my leftover paint. There's no point in just wiping it off and throwing it away, especially when these inks can stack on each other. So I'm wiping that down a little bit so that it's not all one big clump. And I'm just going to do the old acetate press and move around and splat, I guess, the splat method. And I'm just going to set that aside and keep adding color whenever I continue on. So I'm with the teals here. I'm kind of finishing up. So it's time to go ahead and start dipping the rest of the teal on. There wasn't a whole lot of teal there left. So I think later on I go ahead and add some. But waste not, want not. And then I realized at some point I, I ought to really try to dry this a little. I don't want to push my luck, even though I it handled it pretty well. I really do like how the color does lay on top there really nicely. No brown yet. So I decided I wanted to do a border because you couldn't really see the pattern like you could in that squirrel uh, example. So I decided I would go up around. And then I looked at it and I said, oh, I really don't like this. So... Eventually, I'm going to crop, or I'm going to do the die cutting. Uh, I'm going to add some of the, uh, the yellow that was sitting off to the side, because hey, why not? See how many colors you can smoosh in there. Smooshing, that's what it is, ink smooshing. Now we get to the blue ink of and I had a lot of that left, so I wanted to water it down a little bit. I didn't, I didn't want it to be so bold. And now I'm swooshing the opposite way, just, just to see, because all this is is play. I had to learn a long time ago that this is just paper. So you just play, and the worst thing that happens is you hate it and you throw it away, but you learn something. So I'm just tapping away here, dipping into the uh, color there. That really is a lovely color of blue. I mean, how could you not be cheered up looking at this? It looks like a birthday party, doesn't it? Now I'm taking a microfiber cloth. Don't feel like you can't dab off some of, of the color. That's one of the beautiful things about watercolor. You can dab off quite a bit. Now I'm switching to Copics because there, there aren't flesh tone colors and they're in a gray. So I am doing extremely simple Copic coloring, just trying to give them a little bit of pigment. And this works over the, out, uh, the uh, fade out ink just great. Um, and you still get 
the effect. Um, but it's, you know, and you can mix it with the watercolors. Who's going to know? And I don't know of all that many flesh tone watercolors anyway. I mean, I guess maybe there are. So I'm switching out to a gray and I already didn't like it. So there was the blender pen trying to clean it out or maybe I'm cleaning out the blue. I can't remember. So I'm just going to finish coloring in his his little cheeks and his nose and stuff and we will get to the finished product. Don't don't feel cheated that uh, you're not getting a coloring lesson because you wouldn't want your coloring lesson from me. So many wonderful colorists out there and and I'm just not one of them. I have I have nice abilities I guess in some things but just not coloring. We all have our talents and it's better to recognize I'm not going to sit here and pretend to give you a coloring lesson. So here are the folks all dolled up and with their drinking and in the background there is the leftover place thing that I'm going to use on background later. Now these are the Altier, Altier um, Shark Tooth White. It's a wonderful white pigment ink. Um, it's truly bright white and there's my rabbit hole designs, uh, my powder tool and it gets that static off of there. When you're working with white on black or black on white, you really, really, really want to make sure that you powder it up good. And I was talked into getting this from a couple of friends, WJ's Crafting Corner and Amanda Stevens Pear Blossom Press. And they shamed me into throwing away my bag that I'd had for, I don't know, 20 years. So I'm stamping this Aloha, which is from the same set, the uh, Trinity Stamps Wish You Were Here. And I, have to, I didn't prime that stamp. So, you know, I'm just kind of letting it sit for a minute and I may have to restamp it, but I don't think I do um, wind up doing that. So I had already die cut the Aloha and set the uh, sentiment back in there. That makes it a lot easier to set up. Now, like I said, I have a dip in that table, but I'm changing tables here very soon. Um, and I'm going to peel that off of that sticky mat. And that way I, you don't, because I hate it when you stamp out stuff and then you get out your die and you mess it up. Not that it would have taken that long to fix, really, just one word, but sometimes... You know, you just don't need the frustration. So I'm going to go ahead and add Hero Arts Embossing Powder to this and use my heat tool and be back in a second. I grabbed my um, embossing powder. I put my white in a bigger tub like this so I can spoon it on. It's just way easier than doing the over the paper thing. Um, and I don't tend to spill as much which for me is a, a big plus. I hope you enjoyed our little play today. And here's what we were messing with. Uh, be sure to check out the supplies below. I appreciate it when you use the links. I hope you'll like, subscribe, tell your friends, come back and see me. And here are some more videos to watch. Until next time. Bye-bye.